Hello, welcome to Access. I'm Rob. Joining us is Holly. Hey, guys. It's still Final Fantasy 15 week. We're still playing it. Uh, this is preview code build. This is not the final build of the game. No. Um, we will have some final build of the game for you later in the week. But this video is five ways Final Fantasy 15's combat changes everything. Yes. And oh. it really is a massive shake-up. So, Holly, number, f number one is the fact that it's real time now. Yeah, no it is. And um, I know we've touched on it before, but like 14 slightly, but not really. This is it, this is the first time Final Fantasy's gone. Goodbye turn-based battle, hello action. Hello action against a big slimy toad. Eat fire. <laughs> so this toad actually only comes out in the rain. You won't find them if you're wandering around in the sun. See, that's what I like. And I guess the weather is completely dynamically changing. It so is. It, it could be sunny. If it was sunny, you wouldn't be fighting this toad now. No, it, it, it's this is actually all me playing as well. Um, I'm hoping, because I haven't seen this look edit yet. Look at his tongue. I'm hoping Rob's done a good job of making me look cool. I've tried, Holly. This is one of Ignis's attacks. Yeah, so basically it's completely real time, which means you're controlling everything as it goes. It's proper action. Think, if you've played a lot of RPG, RPGs especially, think Kingdom Hearts. Really, that's the, the closest thing I can get to you right now is Kingdom Hearts. But I guess you trying to roll on me? the thing for me as a, as a Final Fantasy fan who, who really loves turn-based combat, but is open to real-time combat, mm. it's not just kind of a dumb hack and slasher, is it? There's still a lot to be thinking about. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, you might get away with it when you're massively leveled above your enemies. This is not hack and slash. You cannot simply hold the attack button and win. Well, good. It's how I, it like, be. I like a bit of you know cerebral workout when I do my when I do my battling in Final Fantasy. Um, our second point, magic. Now, yeah. magic in Final Fantasy 15 is hugely different to any Final Fantasy game. Yes. Well, if you've not, if you've played Final Fantasy before, I suppose, think of Riku's mix in Final Fantasy 10, which is her limit break. Basically, you draw from the world. Yeah. Uh, a bit like Final Fantasy 8. You draw the magical elements. Look, they're still on fire. Yeah, you used amazing. fire magic yeah. and the environment is still burning. Yeah, so basically here we go. I've drawn some magic. I've got ice, lightning and fire available. What I do now is I take it and I mix it. So I'm taking some. This is going to give me thunder. Three times thunder, a potency of 40. So actually really strong. Okay, so you, the strength of your spells is dependent on how much of an element you put into the craft of it. Exactly. And now by adding these extra uh, items, whether I add ingredients or things I found in the world, changes what it does. So if I add a high potion, for example, it becomes a cure cast. So it casts thunder and it heals me. That is wicked. So you can be really clever. Obviously, the cooler oh, and more rare the items you find stop cast. Um, depending on the item, it depends on the highest level. I think I did um, a stop cast like a level 98. It's like a guaranteed stop. It's amazing. This is really exciting. And you draw the elements from the world. You find like rocky outcrops almost with elements exactly. coursing through them. And you can suck them out basically and then, and then use those raw ingredients to craft magic. You can. And it really kind of lends itself to the whole idea that everything in Final Fantasy XV is part of one coherent world. Like there's no... The battle system is, is within the world. The world is open exactly. and seamless. The magic is within the world. Everything is, is one coherent, seamless thing. And here you are using ice magic and, and freezing everything. But it, you have to be careful. So for example, if I throw a lightning down too close to Iggy or Gladio, both of them will get hurt. And they'll actually right. paralyze them. You'll find them on the floor twitching. Um, because they're paralyzed. So, so you can't just throw it in blind. Here we go. See, now I've got both oh, of yeah. them. Uh, and they'll be on the floor now for a second. So. You can't just throw magic so in wildly. it's not like in other Final Fantasies where you can just blast away. Yep. You've got to think about it. You have to think about I them. I really like that. And things are still weak to elements as well, so you have to think about what you're going to craft. Now in combat, am I right in thinking that you just control Noctis? Yes, you do just control Noctis, but you still work together. So our third point is the fact you can link attacks with your party members, and we're going to see a couple of examples of that here. God, this thing is getting at you with poison gas, that's bad. No, I'm actually gassing it. I have a, a poison oh, gun. Oh, that's your spell. So I'm actually um, using my gun to slap a poison toxin. That's nice. what I was doing. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, they're called link strikes. So you can actually unlock more on the ascension grid. Uh, this is actually like this, the boys' special attacks. Uh, and often this is them doing an attack and Noctis is finishing up. But when you get link strikes, they actually just work together as a, a cohesive unit, and it looks so badass. Almost when like you do it. dual takedowns in Batman: Arkham Knight. Like yeah, you kind you of just what? activate it, it, and they just go together and make it look awesome. There's one in here in a minute. We're going to see it in a minute. I really, really like. It's the Gladio one, the right? Gladio it's one. the Gladio one. It's the Gladio one. So this is it. Amazing. That was a link strike. Not yeah. You, know, you turn around. Uh, the one with Ignis really cool. You sort of go back to back, and he pushes his glasses up. Perfect timing. See, I love Good that edit. kind of thing where they kind of all go. There's a real camaraderie about them. The story is being told within the battle system, yeah. which is another way that this game is, is, you know, has this whole kind of seamless cohesion to it. 
the way everything is geared towards telling this story. It really is. And it just works beautifully. Um, you know, if you're in danger, they'll come and lift you up, pick you back up. Um, but what you do using the Ascension Grid, which is how you level the characters up, you can unlock different types of link, link attacks and strengthen them. So depending on what's happened to here you... Here we go, here we go. This is a link attack. Oh, that is the Boom. coolest thing. That is the coolest thing. And that's it. This battle system is just like the insta-cool battle system as well. It feels badass. It looks badass. I mean, imagine even if you're rubbish at this, you'll still look cool. You can still look cool if you rubbish it, but it does take skill. So there is the easy option if you don't want to play it on normal. Point number four, which I think is something that really defines Final Fantasy XV and how it breaks away from the rest of the series, is that there is no transition from exploration to battle. No. Like in Final Fantasy, in, you know, there used to be like the random battle screen where it'd whoosh off and you'd be in the battle zone. And then in, even in 13, like there was a separate screen for battling. Here, you're just in the world, the enemies exist within the world, yeah. and you just you just start fighting them. You yeah. can get your weapons out anytime you want and you can start fighting. Yeah, like the MMO side of Final Fantasy has done it, but not like this, not single player. Uh, and it's just, again, it just adds to the sense of the world being alive and you're just in it and roaming. It doesn't remove you from yes. that experience. So what you can see on the mini map in the right-hand corner is like a red circle. If you leave that, that's how you leave the battle. Right, okay. So if you do get into a battle and you don't want to partake, you can just keep running, run out of a circle, and the battle will end. Right. So you're not stuck in them if you do wander through a, a I bad guess patch. there are enemies that will chase you down, though, if you decide to run away. Um, they will chase you to a certain point. Yeah. So you can still get away if you want. Some enemies are not violent by nature. Uh, so they'll, you'll see a little bar at the top that tells you that you've been spotted. Right. Because obviously there's points for stealth as well. But they may do nothing with it. They may just leave you unless you attack them first. So, like, just herbivores, just yeah. grazing on, just the, grazing. on the local... Yeah. Flora. And you're the asshole that wants to throw a spear at them. <laughs> yeah. And the fifth point, this is just so I can geek out about the combat a bit more. Um, the fifth point is, it looks like playing the fight scenes in Advent Children. It, it when does. you do it well, there's that fight scene in Advent Children where they're all fighting Bahamut and Cloud is being lifted up by each character and thrown yes. up the tower and each character's kind of coming into it. It's kind of like that. You've got your link attacks with all your friends. The acrobaticness of it is... is ludicrous at times it really is and it just looks so cool it every time you're fighting there's no just press attack you walk in hit it with the sword go back to your starting position it's really really an exciting battle system to be a part of it really is and um, what you tend to find is so you hit r1 you put your lock on you warp strike over to get you there nice and quick do some damage you can then phase in and out which is basically something blue that i was dodging an attack kill it just hold on R1, find your new attack, warp over and do some damage. And then again, just you can warp in and out as well. It's great. You nip around the battlefield with such speed. I mean, it's a thing that, that, again, Final Fantasy fans haven't really had to think about before in this series. You get to a certain point and you just grind through enemies. There's no... You don't really have to be alive with your fingers, so to speak, no. when you're battling. You have to think about what you're doing if you're fighting a boss and you need to, you know, implement a strategy. But really, you're just, you know, clicking through menus. Whereas here... It's really testing a completely different skill set. Yeah, it really is, and it just it visually as well. It looks, it looks and feels so different because it provides you with something that we've not really seen in Final Fantasy, which is right. high action, high octane, but still incredibly Final Fantasy. I mean, I am well up for it. I you mean, I, I know quite a lot of people are nervous about the tr transition from turn based to real time, but I'm really, really excited for it. Uh, Tabata San has done a good job, and he's managed to make sure again that even though he's changed things, he's still managed to keep Final Fantasy. Well, there you go, guys. That is uh, five ways Final Fantasy XV's combat system has completely changed everything. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think of the battle system, if you're up for the change to real time. Um, when the game finally comes out, which is very soon now, please let us know how you're getting on with it, how you're finding the battle system, and do stay tuned to the channel as we have absolutely loads more videos on Final Fantasy XV on the channel already and coming up. Yes.